Okay, here's my second attempt to show the three forms of syllogism. And um, I'll, sh I'll read a little bit to you just so you can hear how it, how it reads. Whenever the same thing belongs to all of one subject and to none of another, or to all of each subject, or to none of either, I call such a figure the second. By middle term in it, I mean that which is predicated of both subjects. By extremes, the terms of which this is said. By major extreme, that which lies near the middle. By minor, that which is further away from the middle. The middle term stands outside the extremes and is first in position. A syllogism cannot be perfect anyhow in this figure, but it may be valid whether the terms are related universally or not. If then the terms, then it goes on to tell, if, or if then the terms are related universally, a syllogism will be possible whenever the middle belongs to all of one subject and to none of another. It does not matter which has the negative relation, but in no other way. Okay, that's for the second figure. That it goes on and tells all the different situations you could possibly put, uh, and what what the result is. But let you can go and read that for yourself in Prior Analytics, Aristotle Organon Prior Analytics. Towards the end, yes. Okay, so these are the three figures, and what the what it, the reason for it is that we looked at already that the two terms of a premise. And if you go to form an argument with two premises, it had to be such that one term was common and two terms were different. So what ends up happening is there's a natural form to the possible ways of forming an argument. And it is that in, in the first figure, you, when, when you, ideally when you just think of it, you could just think of, you can think of it in, in a kind of, a, 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 think of it ideally, that if you contain one term in another term, like you say on this example, in the first example, all animals are living things, then living things, then animals has been contained in that term, living things. And then in the second premise, you say something about living things. So that you, whatever you say about living things is now true of animals. Whether you say all, none, some, or indefinite. But practically, to help keep a tra track of what it, the first figure is, you can realize that the first figure is such a situation where the term that's in common is at one time the subject, at another time the predicate. Uh, I'm sorry, the ter term that's in common is one time the predicate, and another time the subject in the second premise. Whereas the subject and predicate of the first and second premises differ. So in this case, animals are all living things. I mean, an sorry, sorry. all animals are living things. Then now anything you say about living things, whether you say all, none, some, or indefinite, is can you can draw a conclusion of that being true also of animals. Is or is not. Okay, so in the second figure, When you use all or none, universal distribution, or negative distribution universally, birds, for this example, we have birds and animals. You know, all birds are animals. So animals has been universally distributed to birds. Now, on the second premise, we look at the, if this is a positive assertion, we take a negative. Say something that is not distributed, that we know animals is never distributed to all or none of something. And that brings the conclusion between this term and this term. And for a silly example, we say all birds are animals, and then we say no rocks are animals, then we know that the conclusion that no birds can be animals, because, or can be rocks, because Animals is universally distributed to birds, but animals is not universally distributed to this other term. So there's no way that birds and this term can fit within the same genre. That's the common predicate. Two premises with a common predicate and different subjects. It's not every form. You can go through and read prior analytics and find out the reasons why the other forms don't work, which is a great thing to do if you, if you want to get better at this and reason any anyone's argument, the reason why it's not true, what they say, or reason why what you say is true, or vice versa. The third figure 
is when you have the common subject. So now we say all birds are animals, and then we say all or nothing about animals, and this gives us a particular relation, of, sorry about birds, and this gives us a particular relation between the predicates of the two premises. So if we, because if we know that we've distributed, universally distributed or universally excluded the predicate from birds, in this case we've distributed animals to birds, all birds are animals, then it follows that whatever is true or not true of all birds is true of, of some animals or, or not, or does or does not belong to some animals. So all, and this is the common subject, where all birds are animals, um, all birds have feathers, so some birds, some animals have feathers. And then that's, that's a particular conclusion. And, and there are, all the conclusions are particular. All the required premises require either a universal, or in the case of the first figure, require all none, some, or indefinite. Um, and so then the conclusions uh, are particular. And that's the three figures. You really, can, you can by knowing what's not true is as valuable as knowing what is true. So when you go through prior analytics, you can find pages and pages about what's not true, and then uh, that you know that much more about what what is true.